In this video, I've created a basic landing page using just HTML and CSS. It may look plain at first, but scroll animations make it impressive. Scroll animations are usually tricky because they require precise control over when animations start, end, or reverse. This is typically done using JavaScript, but with just three lines of CSS, we can achieve that control easily. It's simple, creative, and powerful. Watch how the elements animate smoothly as you scroll. Let's see how it works. The element will keep rotating as long as it's visible on the screen. We'll add a scroll-based animation that runs while the user scrolls. I've applied it to this image by adding a class called auto-rotated in the HTML. That's it. The rest is handled with CSS. In CSS, this class triggers an animation that rotates the element from zero degrees to 360 degrees. But unlike regular animations, we don't set a fixed duration, because it depends on how fast the user scrolls. In this case, the animation won't work as expected. To make it work, we use the Animation Timeline property with the View function. View indicates that the animation happens only when the element is visible on the screen. Try running the website again. It should work. Here's how it works. When the element enters the viewport, the animation starts. Imagine the screen height as a range from 0% to 100%. At 0%, the element starts at 0 degree rotation. At 100%, it completes at 360 degrees. And the best part? When you scroll back up, the animation reverses automatically. Let's create a smooth scroll animation using only CSS. The goal is to make an element fade in and slide up as it appears on the screen. The animation will play when the element enters the center of the screen, then pause so the user can read the content. First, in the HTML, I add a class called AutoShow to the element I want to animate, such as a heading or paragraph. In the CSS, I assign it an animation named TextAppear. Next, I define the keyframes for the animation. It starts with the element fully transparent and shifted down by 100 pixels. As you scroll, it gradually fades in and slides up to its original position. Next, I use Animation Timeline View to link the animation to scrolling. You'll now see the animation run smoothly as you scroll. To control when the animation starts and ends, I use the Animation Range property. I set it to begin when 20% of the element enters the viewport and to end when the element fully covers the viewport height. As you scroll down, the animation plays smoothly, when you scroll back up, it reverses automatically, creating a dynamic and interactive effect. Let's create an image reveal animation using only CSS. In the HTML, I add a class called image reveal to the image I want to animate. Next, in the CSS, I assign it an animation named image reveal. Then, I define the keyframes. The image starts off blurred, desaturated, dark, slightly smaller, and pushed downward. As the user scrolls, it gradually becomes sharp, bright, colorful, and returns to its original size and position. To trigger this animation on scroll, I use Animation Timeline View. The animation will run right. Now, the View function accepts two values. The first value controls when the animation finishes. For example, 50% means the animation completes when the element reaches the middle of the screen. The second value controls when the animation starts. For example, 20% means the animation begins when the element reaches 20% of the viewport. So if I use view 50%, 20% the animation begins at 20% and ends at 50% of the viewport height. When using scroll-based animations, always use both value for better control and a smoother experience. In most cases, using 10% and 5% as your view values works great for subtle scroll-triggered effects, and that's how you create a smooth image reveal animation on scroll. Let's create a popular fade-up animation using only CSS. First, I assign a class called FadeUp to each timeline item that I want to animate. In the CSS, I apply an animation named FadeUp to this class. Next, I define the keyframes. The animation starts with the element almost invisible, slightly pushed down, and scaled to 50%. As the user scrolls, it fades in, moves upward to its original position, and scales up to full size. I add scroll behavior using animation timeline colon view property. Now you can see the animation working properly. 
To control when each animation starts and ends, I use the Animation Range property. For example, the first item uses Entry 20% Cover 40%, meaning the animation starts when 20% of the item enters the screen and ends when it covers 40% of the viewport. Similarly, the second and third items use Entry 40% Cover 60% and Entry 60% Cover 80%, creating a staggered scroll effect. This setup results in a smooth, staggered animation as you scroll through the timeline. Let's create a smooth blur animation using only CSS. In the HTML, I add a class called Auto Blur to the text I want to animate. In the CSS, I assign it an animation named Auto Blur Animation, with a linear timing function and both fill mode to apply styles before and after the animation. Next, I define the keyframes. The animation starts with a strong blur of 20 pixels. As the animation progresses, the blur gradually reduces to zero, making the text fully clear. I use Animation Timeline View to tie the animation to scroll position. To make the text stand out in the center of the screen, I set the animation to end at 50%, which corresponds to the middle of the viewport. Now the text looks clear in the center, but I also want it to blur again afterward. To achieve this, I set the blur to zero between 35% and 45% of the scroll range, so the text appears sharp when it's centered. It then blurs again at 70% and finishes with no blur. This approach makes it easy to create smooth blur in, blur out, and sharpen effects while scrolling. Let's create a horizontal scrolling animation using CSS. In the HTML, we add a class called Horizontal Scroll Wrapper. In the CSS, I set Overflow X Auto, so the content inside can scroll horizontally if it overflows. I add Scroll Snap Type X Mandatory to make each child element snap into place as you scroll. To make the scrolling smooth, I use Scroll Behavior Smooth. Then, I customize the scroll bar using scroll bar width thin for a slimmer look and scroll bar color to set the thumb color to bright green and the track color to dark gray. This setup provides a clean and user-friendly horizontal scrolling experience.